right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our podcast, Hapakule. Uh, my name is Morungi, and I'll be hosting this with the beautiful, awesome, Fatu. <laughs> Come on, <It's> okay. <laughs> right. Hey, y'all, um, this is Fatu. Um, I'm from the Gambia, so yeah, welcome to our podcast. <laughs> Uh, in today's topic, we shall be talking about dating in Japan. And we have two wonderful people, some of my people, <laughs> some of my personal persons. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. We shall start with the lady. My name is Nelly. Uh, what else? I'm from Kenya. Mm. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. Mm. And the gentleman. Yeah, hi, I'm Geoff, I'm from Malawi, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it's good to be here. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you guys for joining us. My name is Murungi, I'm from Uganda, and I'm so excited to be here. We yeah. shall start from the beginning. When did you all start dating? <laughs> I mean, okay, but before that, let, let's 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 um, get a background, like how long have you been here in Japan? Mm-hmm. Sure. For me, for me, I've been here for three years, almost three years. What about you, Nelly? I've been here for five years. Five years, okay. Yeah. I've been here, I think, four years. Four years. Mm. I've been here as long as Joff has been here. <laughs> yeah. So what do you all do in this Japan? <laughs> uh, I study. Yeah, so I'm about to finish my studies. Yeah, I think we are all students, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. a student. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah. So whatever we discuss will basically be from an adult student perspective. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we have very many exciting stories to share. <laughs> so when did you guys all start dating? When, like, since we were young, <laughs> of course, we started from the beginning. <laughs> from uh, the beginning, the question is too big. I think when I was in my undergraduate, undergraduate, undergraduate. Yeah. Mm. that's about 1920. <laughs> yeah, 20, yes, 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 1920. I mean, I, I, I started early, like when I was 12, so. <laughs> damn, oh. damn, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, we have a pro here, right? <laughs> no, not really. Not really. It's just, yeah, just some kids stuff, you know. <laughs> Job must have started at seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you know, the funny part about me is that I used to never like women. What? Are you straight? And then what changed? I'm serious. So I actually I finished my university my university. I was still a virgin. Oh yeah. So I used to be scared of women like a lot. So Mm. I was just uh, I started dating I think after 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 university. So this uh, was doing my diploma. So I did my diploma first before I went to med school. Okay. So uh, after my diploma thing, when I went into the world, uh, that's when I saw the big things. I was like, that <laughs> has been decent. <laughs> so you were about like 23, 24 when you started dating? Yeah. And I had actually to date so fast so that I could have everybody else. Oh, goodness. So it was, it was competition it was for you. Oh man, I see that that is really interesting. Well, I think I started dating when I went to the university. Okay, uh, okay now, now I feel bad. I'm like, what? I, like, no, I, it's, okay, it's okay, part two. The other <laughs> bad catches the warm part two. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I, yeah. I did have I did have a guy that I liked when I was in high school, but we never really went out on dates. It was, you know, things about oh you write letters back and forth, back and forth. But yeah. in the holidays you really don't meet because uh my dad actually my <laughs> mom, my mom was very, very tough at you know how African mothers are. Yeah, African you're going to sleep around with boys. You're going to yeah. bring me trouble in this house. Yeah, so it definitely. was it was 
really, really. And there were no mobile support. phones at that time, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be a physical meeting or a letter or something. And even then, the physical meeting, you have to plan in advance, you know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't plan at school, you're not going to be able to meet in the holidays. So uh, I started dating when I was at the university, but it was all like, well. Okay. I, mean, Joe, so I, I have a question for Joe. Joe, okay. <laughs> do, do boys experience this uh, harshness from the mother? Don't bring me girls here, blah, blah, blah. I think, I'm sure every woman, girl here or woman, lady here has experienced that from the that mother. That is true. You? Yes. Yeah. I know. Actually, like for me, when I was young, I was very difficult. Mm. So um, I used to like uh, uh, fighting a lot. <laughs> Typical boy. So, eh? Yeah. So this time around, I was single. So actually, they, we got the point whereby the the teachers at my school they had to actually tell my mom. I think this guy has to get a girl. If he gets a girl, he's gonna he's Come gonna be going. quiet. What? <laughs> yeah. what? What kind of prescription is that? Be- because you know there are times like when you are about to to do something and then you yeah. see your girl is just right there. You know you're gonna be like oh, okay. Or if you're angry and then your yeah. girl comes to you and then just holding you, you know, the electricity you're gonna feel from that. It's gonna stop all your anger. Like you're gonna be like you know what? It's okay. But Joe, <laughs> how old were you when they were suggesting you get a girl? Hey, I was. Uh, I think I was uh, 16 or 17. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So my mom would actually talk to me. Like, every time I get back home, maybe she's going to be like, you know what, you need, you need to find a girl. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a girl. Lord, I'm going to get a girl. But, <laughs> but, but it's different for us girls. First, they yeah. tell us, you do yeah. not bring any boys here. Yeah, but then later, uh-huh. later when you start growing up, they're going to be like, uh, when are you? When are you getting married? <laughs> no, which is a problem. Problem. <laughs> How, what, how am I supposed to get married when you told me not to bring any boys? True, not even true. stand close to them. Mm. Right? Uh, Joff, did it help? Did, did, but later on, by the time you got a girlfriend, uh, the, you had stopped, right? Being difficult. You were mature by then. Or really the, the suggestion <laughs> helped? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no I, seriously. So, so your, your definition of maturity is me stopping being difficult. Uh, uh, <laughs> somehow, 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 somehow. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think I became I became better, but then mm. I became so protective. So mm. if my because I was still having like the old me inside of me. So even if uh, so, if I'm with my girl, then I wouldn't want anything bad to happen. My girl. So I mm. became so protective and stuff. Yeah, but then I think when I started dating after that, I became a better guy. I would say. I see. I but I, but I think dating when you're young, it's mainly like just talking on the phone or maybe like seeing each other at school. It's nothing much, nothing out of that. Um, that is true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, but but I know some people who have dated like since high school and now they are married. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Such a that happens. That happens. Hats off yeah. to those people. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be me. <laughs> Uh, and you actually did what do you become after that like wife and husband or brother and sister or, or... yeah i mean uh, your best friends for life true yes probably probably yes. and yes. it's actually so amazing i mean i don't know to have one person um for such a long period of time i mean mm. yeah it's a, it's a lot of uh it's, you know you have to be so faithful like right? Dedication. I met I met this Finnish girl. She at the time she was I think twenty four. She said she had been with her boyfriend for like eight years, but uh, they had decided to break up because they are scared of not. They were scared of being together and not mm. ever knowing what else is out there for them. Oh my god! So they were like, let's take a break. Mm-hmm. Everyone do there. whatever you want to do. <laughs> If mm-hmm. after a certain time you feel like, okay, I think I'm done being around, mm-hmm. uh, then if, if, if we still feel the same about each yeah. other, mm-hmm. we can get married. But if we don't, then life has happened. <laughs> I thought that was very mature of them, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was very and mature. Eventually, 
Uh, I don't know. We were not that close. I met her at, you know, one of those random school visits and we got talking. Yeah. Mm. But she, I, mean, I, I totally agree with that kind of um, thinking. Like you have to probably explore the options out there, like vet what's happening, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, see see what's good, what's bad. Maybe you're just with some one person and you don't know like if that if that's the the best. Mm. You know, you, you don't know. You, you have no idea. So mm. that's, that's, I think that's good. I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm for that. So this, uh, this, this, this exploring you, you're talking about, is, does that have limitations or you just have to? It's full on. Like, I think at the moment they have broken mm. okay. I think it, do anything. it depends on the individuals or the individual. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what their particular terms and conditions were, yeah. but actually, mm. she said that the reason why she had come to Japan, mm-hmm. that was partly the reason why, like yeah. to put distance between her and him, so mm-hmm. that you know she could kind of think without, you know, knowing I can call him immediately, I can go out with mm. him immediately, you know, because I think they also they were like in the same neighborhood, kinda like. They'd been together a long time and they just needed a break, kind of. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so talking about Japan, um, the question we want to ask is how is dating in Japan? What's your perspective? For example, like, are there any rules? Like, are there any confusion, frustration, sort of? <laughs> mm, for me, I've, I've not uh, tried. Uh, have I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think it is easy but then it's not from the perspective of trying to date a Japanese yeah mm-hmm. I don't think it is easy either uh, here or back home I don't think it is any easy mm-hmm. I think because uh, of course it boils down to who you feel you are compatible with so True. I don't think from that perspective it has been any easier after i came to japan mm. yeah uh, personally i felt like uh i wouldn't uh, this may be a little bit biased but uh especially with the japanese i always felt like maybe they would never see me as an individual mm. it would be more exploration for them <laughs> that's how i felt i felt like they would be just wanting to explore I not really want a relationship, relationship, so uh, mm-hmm. I never really bothered with that. Though, mm-hmm. I met a really nice Chinese guy who were mm-hmm. doing Japanese classes together. He was a really nice guy. He was really mm-hmm. kind and all mm-hmm. these things. Oh, but, yeah. you know, language barrier. He mm-hmm. knew Chinese and extremely broken Japanese. I knew English and my Japanese was still as bad. So we really didn't have a meeting point. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a meeting point but uh, it's not like it was just something that passed really yeah, yeah I, I agree with your point with regards to exploring um, I mean I have met two Japanese guys before but talking to them I just feel like because I'm a black girl so they just mm. want to experience what it's like being that black girl like talking to a black girl and stuff like it was nothing like something like that they want to be serious or stuff so mm-hmm. yeah, I agree like that c- curiosity is something that most Japanese maybe yeah. it's not for everyone mm-hmm. but for yeah, the ones yeah, yeah. have met like that curiosity in dating a black girl is something yeah and I feel like others are just freaked out <laughs> like outright freaked out <laughs> yeah it's like they don't have the energy you know they yeah. to make the approach it's, it's they, they, difficult they can't. But wait, it's different with girls though. Japanese girls, it's different. Just... You mean they are more uh, courageous, more bold than the boys, or? Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe a black guy dating a Japanese girl. It's ah, different. I see. Yes. So I tell agree. us what's been your experience. <laughs> 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 he just started laughing. <laughs> there must be many uh, stories under that laughter. Yeah, I actually don't know where to start from. Yeah, but I think. <laughs> <Really? the> picture... <laughs> but wait, before before you before you come to Japan, like, were you thinking like, um, I'm gonna go get with Japanese girls and see how they are? 
and it's going to be easy or it's going to be hard like mm. will i like them at first mm-hmm. actually you know like when i came here i actually when i came here my first girlfriend the relationship i had was not japanese okay mm-hmm. Yeah, so she was a girl from Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So I, I think that lasted for some time. And then, um, yeah. So uh, the, 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 the other thing, problem that I had was uh, I, I've had issues. I don't know. I don't want to sound racist or whatsoever, <laughs> but I've got issues when it comes to dating uh, 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 a Japanese or a white girl. Mm-hmm. But then... That doesn't mean I, I haven't dated them. When but you then, say uh, issues, what kind of issues are we looking at here? Uh, you can do a comparison, for, not, for example. Really like like me. Big, nothing mm. really like big. But then, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just, it's just a taste, you know? Like ah, called, okay. You, Tastes you, and preferences and, are different. Yeah, so you tend to like something better than, uh, than something. I yeah, see. but I think my experience, what I have noticed is that I think, like the way Fatu has said it, I think it's um, it's it's quite easy for a black guy to to date a Japanese girl. Mm-hmm. I've been told that uh, black guys apparently have a secret that uh, the Japanese girls are looking to uncover. Never heard of that. Yeah. So, but then the problem is that when you look at that. Uh, the, the, the age limits. Mm. Uh, so, if you just want to have fun, then mm. you you actually looking at maybe Japanese girls, maybe who are probably less than twenty eight or twenty seven or thirty. Mm-hmm. So these like uh, most of the times they really they just want to have fun. So if you go clubbing. Okay, it's just fun. And after that, and one thing uh, I've noticed about Japanese girls is that, um, like, especially these are uh, the youngsters. So mm. if you've had fun and then they go, it's like, it's not like they care about you calling them after that. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. And wow. there won't be any connection or communication after that. Like, that was, that was, that happened and then it happened. And then even if you meet for the next time, let's say you go clubbing and you meet up for the next time. You won't go like, ah, you remember me? It's gonna be like, Hi, what? what's up? How you doing? Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. But now the danger is when you start dating women, Japanese women who are like maybe in their thirties, like especially maybe 35, 36, mm-hmm. these ones, they want a relationship. Uh, let me ask a question. When you say uh, the ones below 30, they're out for fun, is there some outright consent to this that you guys are like, okay, me, I'm in for the fun, so that there's like no gray line there. Uh, uh. Do you guys do you approach them, or do they tell you, okay, you know what, me, I'm just in for the fun, and that's it, or is it an assumption? Mm. Look, sometimes if you you can tell them, you know, one thing about Japanese culture is this: they they, they love honesty. Mm. Yeah. So if 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 you go to her and then you tell her, you know what, this is a, and actually sometimes they would ask you. Sometimes they even say, is this just for sex? Mm. Okay, yeah, and you really okay. have to be very honest with them. But otherwise, I like, I like that. I like that. Me too. Mm. Yeah. So if if you say, okay, fine, it's just it's just sex. It's like they've got nothing else to worry about that. But then the danger about Japanese girls is that the moment they invest their love or and time. Mm-hmm. In you, trust me, it's it's mm-hmm. gonna be crazy. Like yeah, after that, you? if you leave in them, chaos is gonna happen. <laughs> Even after you've set out the terms and conditions. Now, if if you said sometimes if you said that, but then slowly, like uh, uh they get attached. Eh? They get attached to that. Yeah. It becomes it becomes so difficult. It, it becomes see. so so difficult. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I have heard stories of Japanese girls being very needy and clingy towards um, black guys. So, I mean, this this brings me to a question like, what, what are the main goals of dating? The reason why you date? Is it just to pass time, to have fun, or to look for something serious? Like, mm-hmm. Nelly, what do you do? What, 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 um, personally, I love the compatibility. I love the... 
the fact that uh, someone else can uh, challenge me intellectually, I can relax with, I can mm-hmm. have fun, you know, yeah. you know my person. So mm-hmm. I'm all for the seriousness. I don't think mm-hmm. I have ever dated for fun. I have never been uh, for that. Mm-hmm. So I think I've been all serious all through. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So for me, I think those are the reasons. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, I think I've also been more on the serious side, but along the way, mm. it just gets okay. <laughs> yeah. Like it just gets yeah. like okay, yeah. we are okay. here for now. When it's mm. over, let's see what yes. happens. Like yes. personally, yes. as I said, yes. I, I, I like this guy since I was like 15 for a very mm-hmm. long time. Let me just mm-hmm. say. Okay, they said nothing is a waste of time in your life, but I felt like I really spent a lot of my time on just mm. this one person. Mm. I felt like I should have dated more. Uh, you know, mm. even, even if it's just for the fun of it, I felt like I should have dated more. But even when I was dating, it was more like, okay, let's do this. When he comes, this is over. <laughs> I know. Mm. <laughs> so you yeah, girls right. out there, don't go waiting for niggas, okay? Uh. Mm-hmm. You, 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 oh you, man, you, done. Don't wait for anyone. Life, no you way. Live your life. If you have set out to have fun, uh-huh. have fun. If you're looking for something serious, you know, just just be serious. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, personally, now I'm in for the long haul. Okay. Yeah. For you. Mm-hmm. I mean, for, for me, basically, like in the beginning, it's mainly just fun and getting to know each other just like Nelly said it's a compatibility um mm. that's usually what I look for but in that in this beginning it's just to have fun how can we um basically connect and stuff maybe mm. later maybe later after dating maybe there can be something serious that can happen but mm. in the beginning it's just um to see learning the person me. yeah to learn you and I think that's the main the main reason of dating for me yeah, yeah. is the time that I want to know you i want to explore and see yeah. if what mm. you're like what your what's the things that you don't like and maybe mm. you are there things that you do i might not like and see mm. if it's gonna go anywhere so yeah, yeah. for me dating is just a face to have fun and get to know each other for me yeah mm. is it the same with you guys joff or you, your reasons are totally different <laughs> No, I, I, I honestly actually, speaking, <laughs> honestly, honestly speaking, yes. Mm. Uh, it's good to be serious in a relationship, mm. but then I think the bigger question for me is when do you when do you start being serious, mm. and uh, you you really need to give a, a relationship a chance to mm. to 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 grow and growth doesn't have to be directional you have to give a, a relationship a chance to just grow give it time give uh, it take time. its natural yeah. path and then uh, when when you actually when you're open to each other and you you having fun because w- when you have fun that means you end up being uh, close to each other because you cannot have fun yeah. if you're not close to each other yeah so, yeah if you're having fun you're going to be close to each other if you're close to each other you start knowing each other better uh-huh. Yeah. And then from there, I think like the way Fatsu and Nelia said, later you start actually deciding, like make it okay. I think I can actually stay with this kind of a person. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Kind of person. But it's good to have fun in a relationship. That is true. I agree. That is true. Yeah. But I but I know there's some men in Japan that just are here just to have fun. They just want to have sex yeah. and that's it. They they're not looking for relationship. They're not looking for to invest in um, going out for dinner or anything. Nothing like that. They just want to have sex and that's it. And so. I think this is the time we need to call out our African brothers. This is very very common. <laughs> like I think ninety five percent of our African yeah. brothers are like that. Yes. Yeah, like most of the times when you come here, <laughs> if you meet most of them, I think there are cases whereby when you go out and then maybe you. You meet your friends there, they are all black people, and people be like, you know what? I I just wanna, you know, I just wanna bang that girl or I could, you know, I wanna I wanna do this. Mm. I wanna do this. Yeah. So the target, like the way you say, is just to to have that girl and then maybe just to sleep with her. Yeah. Just have fun and all that, and then off they go. Or they, they might actually end up having a kind of a like uh, uh and this, and most of the times, you know. Most of these guys, when they come in, they're actually married men. 
And they never tell. And they never tell. They won't tell. So, uh, they won't tell. And they're which... actually married men, but then they just want to have fun, you know? Yes. But I later, it, it becomes a problem mm-hmm. when the... Uh, I've got I've I've got an example of my friend. Actually, uh, he's uh, he's married, and then he he comes here, and then he he start dating. And this guy, like the first day, so when you come here, you know, J- the Japanese girls are funny. They, it's difficult to start a conversation with a Japanese woman. It's very difficult. But the moment you start, mm-hmm. once they jump in, they're in. Mm. So the first few days when you're here as a black person, you might feel like, you know, I think I'm not going to be able to date. Okay, maybe I'm not going to be able to do that. But the moment you start interacting and, the, and then the moment they start coming in, they will stay in. So this is what happened to this guy. So the guy would actually uh, uh, travel from where he was staying and he would come to us and say, Jeff, I've been here for how long? You know, I need a girl. I need a girl. Oh, man. Okay, but then it wasn't working, it wasn't working. But now he, he let her got a girlfriend, and this girlfriend was now too much. Whoa. And his wife came, and there was chaos. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, there was chaos, like, there was chaos. And I think the guy did not tell the woman that he was, like, married already. And then when the wife came, there was chaos. The police had to be involved in all that. Oh, my God. Crazy. And the culture here, you know, women are never wrong. So mm. you, you, if if you're in that situation, it's actually crazy. Do you? But she, go uh-huh. on. Ah, Nelly? but uh, I would say the catch is women are not wrong. But in this room, wasn't the guy very wrong? Living on the woman so. and uh, you know doing all this. I mean, there is emotional investment that we have to take into account. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know the good thing about when we start defining uh, men, yes. it becomes uh, if if it's a woman, I yeah. don't expect you to say the man was right. Okay, so yeah. a definition like in this case, if mm. we bring in a woman, yeah, to to define the character mm. of this mm. man, mm. yeah. Okay, the the, the 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 characterization is gonna be like you know he was bad or stuff like that. Yeah. But now when you take it not the perspective of a man, mm-hmm. it's like why can't I have fun? I, I think the only man in this case that I can forgive is the man who outright came said uh, outrightly came and said I am married. I am not it's looking not for easy. any any it's commitment. Not, it's I not, am out to have fun. Yeah? I, I think it. I think people need to be more honest with you yes. know like, what you want out what of this. Uh, yeah. yeah, but there's sometimes you know like uh, you know there's sometimes you're scared of saying the truth. Okay, maybe you don't have to say you're married, but can you at least say yo me? I'm just in for the fun of it. I'm not looking for you know long term or anything. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean you do that, but there's sometimes some women would actually leave when you do that, or oh, sometimes you delay the truth. Mm-hmm. Not that he's not gonna say it, but then probably like the way we gave an example about trying to have fun knowing somebody, you know, during mm. the time you're knowing somebody, ah. you can actually bury uh. or delay some crazy, nasty truth up until when you see that I think I am now comfortable with this person, and then you say, Baby, I think there is this other thing that I wanted to tell you, but then I've been and married with five children. No, I, yes, yeah, <laughs> and another one on the way. Five children, and my my wife is flying in next week. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> she's already in, and she's gonna be like, oh, okay, so maybe I'm just gonna stay here. Yeah, but that doesn't happen. All right, so Joe Fanelli, you guys have uh, stayed in other countries before. Yeah. Um, I would like you to tell us what your ex uh, actually for two two. For two two. Uh though Fatu has been mostly in the Asian area, but uh generally, what are some of the really big differences in say dating Africans or dating other foreigners? You know, what are some of the differences you've met in these different areas you have uh stayed in, these other areas you've lived in? Are there outstanding differences? Yeah, I, I think so. 
I think there is. Uh, but and are it, these differences like mostly from your perspective? So, for mm-hmm. example, me as into this, this and this, but I met this and this. Or is it that, you know, it was other people who made me see the differences? I personally, uh, for me, it was experience with uh, a fellow African and it was totally different it was totally different and i think this is also because of the culture Mm. difference so i could clearly see the difference between how uh this man was uh treating me with how it is normally in my country Mm. so i think for me it was a cultural difference and uh there was more seriousness Mm. uh i don't yes there was more seriousness and uh I felt like the treatment was also different. Mm. Yeah. So for me, I could see a difference. What about you, Fatu? For me, because I was in Taiwan, so um, it's almost the same. Um, mm. You see easy, easy Chinese girls, Taiwanese girls um, that um, black men can easily get to. And for me, while, they, while, while I was in Taiwan, I had one long, um, long-term long relationship. That's basically the reason why I didn't have a lot of negative um, experience oh, while in Taiwan. Okay. But but it's almost the same BS in this here and over there. Like you see men that um, they just want to play around. They don't want to, um, they don't want to get to know you and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, but it's almost the same around the whole of Asia here. Um, the, yeah. the, Taiwan we in, in, in Japan here. Yeah. You you meet the same African men that act the same way. Right. Mm. Well Joff Joff has lived in like what three countries? I think you have so much to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your experience like? Um I I think like for me. Um I don't know. I, I, I think when um, it, it, it's been difficult, like I, I think the time I was the time I was in England, mm-hmm. uh, the, the biggest uh, uh, difference I think would be I, I had to I had to change, you know, like uh, so I, I actually had to learn that you don't treat women the same. Of course, maybe people say you can treat women the same. But then mm-hmm. when you like the time I was in England, like when, when I was dating there, uh, I wouldn't actually the same crazy or funny things I would actually say to my girlfriend mm-hmm. back in Africa, and we laugh about it. This woman is just gonna be angry. Like, she's, <laughs> gonna be, she's gonna be like, uh, "Why would you? Why would you say that?" Is that cultural difference? Or... Yeah, I think I think it should be. Hmm. So the, 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 there are some like. I believe that when you're too close to somebody and you're so romantically uh, attached to each other, mm-hmm. there are sometimes some dirty words become romantic words, like when you say them to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, that is true. so mm-hmm. even if you're making love to your an African kind of a girlfriend, and then maybe it's gonna be saying some crazy stuff, and then you're gonna be like, "Wow, you know what? I'm gonna do this." Mm. And stuff like that. He's, I mean, he's gonna like go along with that, but then you do that to somebody else, it, it, you know, it, she's gonna pull you out definitely. And look, you know what? So that was the biggest, yeah, that was the biggest <laughs> thing. And the other thing, I think, as a black man, the the other thing that actually happens is that when you when you travel outside like that, you, you know, you know, like what white women or Japanese girls always have when it comes to black people. The you, secret, the secret yeah, the, we've been talking about. Secret, yeah, so they will actually, the moment they see a black person, they will relate to you to, you know, you have that big thing and then mm. uh, maybe you're good in this. So there's sometimes it becomes a challenge mm. when you're in a different country and then you are actually, let's say, drinking in a bar and then you see a girl coming to you and then she's actually talking to you. She's like, you know, I've heard that once you go black, like, you don't go <laughs> black. <laughs> so I would actually want to give you the chance. So it becomes a bad thing. If you take her out, then you really have to perform. Otherwise, 
Otherwise, so it's pressure, say, pressure on you guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that becomes that that becomes an issue. But the time I was in Switzerland, Switzerland is a different country because uh, mm. in Switzerland the girls they love fun. Mm. Oh really? Yeah, they love fun a lot. And uh, yeah, as long as you love fun, yeah. So like my time, I think in Switzerland I had fun because I went to Switzerland. I think when I already had this scholarship to come to Japan. So whatever money I was given there, I was just like blowing it. So I was just like, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna have fun. Because from here, I'm going to school. And mm-hmm. that time, like, my mom had already moved to the U.S. So I had nobody actually to actually uh, think of that much, like, back home and all that. Mm. Yeah, so it was, uh, so if I have to actually, I think, compare the girls in Africa and the girls outside, especially in England, they, they, they're more, like, serious, serious girls. When you come to Japan, they're even more, more serious. Um, yeah. in, co- in contrast to that, I've also heard that Japanese men have been complain or cannot really complaining, but uh, they're a little bit insecure. Uh-huh. Well, the African men have they've been told, yeah, you guys, you there's you have cassava and stuff. The other hand, the <laughs> Japanese, the, the Japanese have always uh, felt insecure, especially when they are with African women oh. or black women, so to speak that they, they, they themselves know that they are not really as endowed as the African yeah. men. Yeah. So mm. they're always under pressure. So yeah. it seems yeah. like this pressure is two-way mm. and it's all from the women, you know? That is so true. Yeah. I, 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 that is so true. I have an experience with this Japanese guy. Like, he was treating me so nicely, but like he was, I can see that like he was very insecure the way he talks. He was like, um, what do you want? What do you need? And the way he was just being himself, himself. Um, I can feel like he feels like he cannot give me what an African guy can give me. Mm. So, mm. yeah, they are very insecure. With but, but is it? I feel like generally the Japanese men are a bit shy. Is it really because of being with an African woman or is it uh, culturally, even from the time okay. I came, I could clearly see a difference in mm. how they carry themselves around. So mm. I'm not sure whether it is really because of dating an African woman or mm. I don't even see them being bold with their own women. I'm not sure. I, I really do not know. That, that is true, but uh, like the younger generation seems to be more outgoing, mm. more free. You can see them, you know, holding hands and making out. Mm. Okay, not really making out, but you know, they are more intimate. PDA. PDA. Mm-hmm. But uh, the older people, people like in their 40s and above, those ones are really shy ordinarily. Uh, but from what I've heard from some of my friends, the Japanese guys, Really, when they have an African woman, they are really insecure in that department. True, very true. Mm-hmm. Extremely I insecure. I see. Uh, in that, I was reading uh, one of those uh, blogs, and they were like, mm-hmm. if you're an African woman dating a Japanese, mm-hmm. you know, when you guys are getting intimate, mm-hmm. you have to really help him psychologically. They like have to tell him like, yeah, it's enough, it's good, massage it's just perfect. His ego. You know, yeah. he to really massage his <laughs> you have to massage his ego so that you know they feel more comfortable in that department. I see. Yes, but uh, maybe we'll have to find out from someone who's dating <laughs> mm. or is married to a Japanese. But generally, they do really feel insecure. In that oh, place. I see. Yeah. I think more I guess, pressure to the African men, I think. Uh-huh. More pressure to African men? How? I'm saying this brings more pressure to the African men. African men. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh-huh. What are some of the red flags you guys you know you've noticed? Like, mm-hmm. what would you like to tell people? Like, yo, oh, if you see this, please run, <laughs> run for your life. <laughs> Generally, in dating, uh, uh, personally, I, they may not really be red flags, but again, I need to call out our African brothers, as we already mentioned. That uh, I think we come we, here. We, we dated more African brothers, so we have more experience with them. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, with the African brothers, only dated one, 
<laughs> one other uh, a wallas here mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> the, yeah as we already said they will not tell you the truth it is important you come come, come be come out tell us the truth you know mm-hmm. and we decide eh? mm-hmm. so from my experience with that one person mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. of all they will they'll be the first to tell you i am hiding nothing Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you know. He's hiding something. You know, you haven't even like, asked the person anything. You guys are just talking. I'm like, you know me, I'm not hiding anything. I really like you. I want to have a serious relationship with you. But when you, you know, when you connect the dots backwards, you're like, yo, I didn't ask if you are hiding something or anything. You kind of suggested. So, my dear sisters, that is a red flag. I mean, for me, one red flag is um, the first the time you meet them, they're talking about, I want to be in a relationship. It's the, mm-hmm. I feel it's a trap to just get you quicker in bed. Mm-hmm. So that's the red flag, flag for me. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I also feel like people, like, if you've met them, like, online, mm-hmm. they might have, like, a different government name. Different <laughs> online name. Yeah. Online dating is a whole other topic. Oh my god! You know, like they'll tell you one name, but then you find out they're being called another name. True. Uh, that's that is also something you need to look out for. Uh, and also, some who are like really like they they are pushing, 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 pushing. So, will you go out with me tomorrow? I'm busy. What about Sunday? I'm really not sure. What about Monday? You know, that kind of pressure. Yeah. Like, they're not letting you breathe, you know. As yeah. Fatou said, they are always pushing, pushing, pushing so that they get you into bed with them. So, mm-hmm. if you oh, feel oh, a little kind of pressure, uh-huh. I think that's a red flag for you to reconsider. I would say one of my biggest red flags is uh, when we just meet. Personally, mm-hmm. I prefer... Uh, we meet in public for a while before mm. we really get to know each other, become comfortable, and then we start inviting each other into our houses, yeah? Mm-hmm. So for me, one of the biggest red flags is, oh, yeah, uh, uh, you live nearby, I can come to your house. First, I feel you don't invite yourself. Yeah, you never, invite yourself. never, never let them come to your house. Yes, uh, it, is, it is a mistake. And then... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I really do not like. Do not go to their house. It's a trap. Do not go to their house the first time. Like yes, and then the other thing is, uh, and what I have this I have experienced. I uh, a friend came by, uh, and then he was like, "Oh, I can, I I can, I can sleep over." I mean, no, no, of course you cannot. And right, then, this was the like audacity. The, Why can't the you audacity. Sleep over? And yeah. This was like just the third time or something that we had really even seen each other. You know, I felt it was uh, no, actually, no, I do not want no. Sorry, you do not invite yourself. It is not good. I think yeah. to me, those are some of the biggest red flags to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I think for those ones of sleeping over are not just here in Japan, also back home, you know? Yes. Gosh. I mean, I think these habits are... <laughs> they, they, they cross geographical boundaries. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. For, for, for me, back, back home, like, it's my country I, is a little bit more cultural and religious, so I didn't experience mm. any of that with sleeping over. But coming to Japan, mm-hmm. I got a lot of advances, like, mean, okay, come to my house, I'll cook for you, yeah. or, like, it's it's always coming to my house. Do not go to their house. Do not go yes. to their flag. Like make sure you go out and then experience something outside, but do yes. not go to their house for the first night. It's just some people I, I, I have met some men that are just rude. Are uh, they just rude and they just say that? And for me, I'm I'm I, I know exactly what to tell them. I'm like, no, and that's it. But they do that and that's a big red flag with African men also, like Stop Anyone. trying to come and sleep over. Stop yeah. trying to tell us come and sleep over or whatever. Yeah. Joff, what are your red flags for the brothers? Yes. Enlighten us. Some of these things <laughs> we may be doing that we may not be aware about. <laughs> you, you should actually tell us what the brothers do that we should run away from. Uh-huh. But you could also tell yeah. the brothers uh, what they should run away from when they experience it from a girl. <laughs>